Today is Saturday, August 8th, 2015, and this is the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Call-In Show, presented by Evil Bunny Consulting. I'm your host, Tyrone Griffin, and if it's 3 p.m. you have on your bunny slippers, you are not looking for a job. Welcome first-time and returning listeners. In this show, we discuss strategies and tactics of job search, staying motivated and dealing with career transition. For more tips, resources, daily motivations, and to listen to archive shows, go to the website, bunnieslippersreval.com. They will also find links to the show's Facebook page, Twitter handle, and our YouTube channel. If you're listening live, you can call in with your questions at 347-202-0929. Again, that number is 347-202-0929. And now a word from our sponsors. Evil Bunny Consulting is the alternative to expensive outplacement. They give company-sponsored job seeker workshops as well as the one-on-one -on -one job seeker boot camp. For more information, go to www.bunnieslippersareval.com. <clears throat> resume Edit is the low-cost, high-quality resume writing company with resumes as low as $35, written by certified resume writers. You can find them online at www.resume4edit.com or call 404 860-2473. Be sure to tell them you heard about them on the Bunny Slippers Revo Job Seekers Podcast. Let 3DResumes.net <clears throat> turn your resume into a web page with a customized domain for 12 months for only $30. Help hiring managers and recruiters find you, make your resume available 24-7, and get a professional personalized email address just for your job search. You can see my online resume at TyroneGriffin.com, and for more information on how to get your own, go to 3DResumes.net. If you are thinking or about to look for a job in today's world, you will find a new reality in the job search process. The world has changed. Job search today is much more complicated than five years ago. Volumes of resumes, more applicant screening systems, depersonalized applications, panel interviews, team hiring, long complicated applications, branding, and social media. Yes, the world has changed. But have you? Are you still trying yesterday's approach? Why struggle and miss out on today's opportunities? Career Oyster is here to help. Great coaches, the latest resources, unique strategies personally tailored to your job search. Find out the new reality and how you can prevent costly mistakes. To register for a free 45-minute private session with head coach Howard Caddy, go to careeroyster.com. Find out the facts now. You'll be glad you did. Remember their, their motto, the world is your oyster, be the pearl. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thanks for tuning in again or listening. Um, got a good show this week. I hope you had a good week, first of all. Um, on a Facebook page this week, I uh, saw somebody, I posted it actually to Facebook, a picture I saw. It was a look you get when you uh, upload your resume to a website, and then the next thing it asks is for your employment history, and it's like, oh, gosh, I don't want to go through all of this. You know, a long time ago, back when I first started this podcast and I used to do more uh, speaking engagements, one of the, one of the uh, uh, conversations I, t I covered was the top 10 things you hate about job search. And I think number one was Taleo. And I don't mean any disrespect to that company, but everybody who's been in job search knows when you come to a website and you see, uh, you know, okay, apply for a job and you click on it and you see in the URL for the for the site that Taleo is in there, you just go, oh boy, this is going to be a half hour out of my life that I'll never get back. So anyway, I saw that picture this week and I thought it was funny. Uh, first, thank you uh, again, anybody who's listening live. Um, thank you for tuning in at 7 o'clock in the morning. I uh, apologize for having to do the show this early this week. And I think next week is going to be early too. I think next week it'll be 8 o'clock. Um, but I got some stuff to do today, and um, 10 o'clock just is, would, would not work. So I apologize for that, but I, I, I truly thank you, anyone who is tuned in, who is listening. I, you know, I thank, thank you um, for, for tuning in. As I do every week, I appreciate it. I appreciate your, your kind words, your thoughts, your opinions, uh, good and bad. Um, I, I, I'm just, I thank you. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to come into your life once a week or how many times you listen to my different podcasts and the bunny tips. And I know I keep saying it. I will get back to doing bunny tips. I promise. It's just been. Those are some hard shows to do, believe it or not. That one minute bunny tip, those things are, uh, to, to com compress a thought and idea down to one minute is just hard. So anyway, I'm rambling. So for all you playing the bunny slipper drinking game. Uh, drink up because I've been rambling for a few minutes here and I apologize. 
Um, but today's show, let's get into the meat of it. Today's show is letting go of pain and paranoia. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a show, if you, you guys were listening, um, re- remember that show a couple of weeks ago. It was all about some of the bad experiences that I've had in my career, in my, um, in my work career. You know, we've all had bad experience, experiences. Um, but I just did, you know, for those who didn't hear, I did a whole show and I just talked about some of the things that I've been through. Uh, didn't blame anybody. I mean, you know, I'm not blaming anybody, uh, myself or anybody else. It's just these are the experiences I've had and they were negative experiences. Um, and the reason I did that was to make the point that no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad things may, may seem, you can always bounce back. You can always just keep going. You never, um, you know, I, I was thinking about this show this morning, you know, this morning I was writing my notes and, you know, this today, today's show, and I think maybe some other shows I've done, some other episodes, it's about just not uh, uh, suggestions for dealing with job search, but sometimes it's suggestions for dealing with life. And I didn't necessarily mean that to be, but I found, I think that there are a lot of times that some of the advice that I give, um, not, you know, I'm just a guy talking out of his behind, some people might say. Um, but some of the advice I think you know is, is applicable to life. You know, starts out with the whole idea of, as I said, uh, job searches like like uh, dating. Um, but anyway, I'm rambling again. Okay, take another sip. But today's topic is getting is, is letting go of the pain and paranoia uh, in job search. Now, what kind of pain and paranoia are we talking about? Well, again, that show I did where I talked about all the the negative things that have happened in my career. Um, things happen. And you can't always um, you can't always predict what's going to happen. But you know, what's that saying about life is not most of life is is not about what happens to you, but how you deal with it. And it's very easy in life to let the past dictate your future. Um, one of my karate students, a uh, great guy, uh, but we always you know one thing we always talk about with him is, you know, we talk to him about it is, if you make a mistake on something, if you're doing your card or whatever, you make a mistake, don't dwell on it, you know, because if you dwell on it, you make three more mistakes. So in that case, you made one mistake and, and it's in the past, it's gone, you can't go back and do anything about it. But because you keep dwelling on it, thinking about it, you keep making more mistakes because your mind is not on the present, your mind is on the past. Um, you got to keep your mind in the present. So when, we, when I talk about getting rid of pain, you know, the pain of, 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 of working, things that, you know, maybe negative experiences you've had when working, or maybe negative experiences you've had in job search. Job search sucks. You know, I've said that from day one. It sucks. For people who've never had to, to act, actively look for a job, it sucks. You know, people who have been out there um, for months, you know, years in some cases, it's day in, day out, wake up, go to bed, eat, sleep, go to the bathroom, laugh, cry, sucks all those times. Everything you're doing, it still sucks when you're looking for a job. When we're talking about pain, um, what happens? When you're in job search, you, you, I would think also you get a lot more sensitive to things. Um, people don't call you back. You get sensitive. You know, you're, you're very sensitive about it. Uh, something on my nose. You get very sensitive about it. When people, um, you know, overturning phone calls, when, when people, you know, promise to help, uh, this is one thing. You know, um, I was in a contract position one time, and, and you know, this is painful. Uh, not really painful. It just it was eye-opening. It, was, it more pissed me off than, than, than hurt me. But I was in a contract position, and, you know, they told me when the contract ends, let us know because we'll be able to find you something really quickly. In a couple of weeks, and when my contract ended, they stopped taking my phone calls. You know, and and that bothered me for a while. But you can't dwell on it. You know, I I had to move forward. Why? Because I got to find a job. You know, um, the pain doesn't change that. You know, the, it doesn't. You know, the, the 
no matter what you, you know, you're out there looking for a job, you got to feed your family. Um, if a door gets shut in your face, it's not like the whole world gives you a reset and says, oh, okay, you had a bad day. So we're, we're going to, we're going to take it easy on you for, for a couple of days. No, when you have a, um, a bad day, you got another day tomorrow. You know, it's like job search is like every day is a Monday. No, Mondays are great because Monday is a day. Usually you're going to work. So Mondays, a, you know, job search is like Saturday, you know, you don't have, you don't have no work to do. Um, but you got to let go of that pain. You know, I had to let go of it. You know, it wasn't big, big, big dramatic. I may be being overly dramatic about it. It was, it was just, it pissed me off. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it was like, okay, uh, what do you do? What do you do about what happened in the past? You know, um, some of you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan. And uh, one of the things that um, came up with um, one of the Jedi uh, quotes is, when outnumbered, attack. You know, when you're, you know, your back is against the wall, you attack. You know, that's it. You, you know, when you're when you're outnumbered, attack. Period. So when you're in that situation where, um, you know, somebody's done you wrong or you feel wrong, you've had a bad job search day, or you applied for ten jobs and you got eleven rejection notices, it all closes in on you. But you got to let it go. Because if you sit here and dwell on, excuse me, how bad today was, tomorrow is going to be bad too. Um, that's what people dwell. And, and I mean, it's, this is serious. This is real. Um, there are people that have lost current jobs because of pain that they could not let go from past jobs. Just like relationships. There are people who have messed up current relationships because of past relationships, because they couldn't let it go. Because somebody hurt them in the past and they dwelled on it and dwelled on it and dwelled on it and it, and it festered like a sore and, it, and it, 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 it consumed their life. You know, I mean, the, the, these two are totally on different scales, but it's the kind of thing when you hear about, you know, an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend, uh, you know, goes out and, 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 and assaults their ex, you know, because they're still mad because this person broke up with them, you know. Um, you got to let go of this stuff, you know. Life is, is, is about how you deal with it, you know. No matter what your sob story is, you know, what your sad experience was, there's somebody that had it worse, and they've dealt with it better. You know, all those things that I talked about that I've had in my career, and they were, they were not bad at all. I mean, they, you know, they, again, people had worse. But if I sit here and dwell on them and, 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 oh, poor, woe is me because, you know, I had this happen or I had that happen. I'm not saying life is fair. It's not, you know, depending on how you define fair. The fact that you're breathing, you know, says that it was, it was probably more fair than you, fairer to you than to some other people. But you have to, if you keep you st if you stay stuck there, if you stay stuck in that situation or in, you know, then you never move on. You know, I, why I read, um, F my life, the, you know, that, that, that dumb site where people send in their crazy stories. Yeah. I read it every now and then some of that stuff is just cracks me up funny. I'm sorry, but you know, it's like, you know, people will have broken up three or four years ago. And they're still like, we have another chance. It's like, no, I'm married. Uh, move on, please. You know, but but anyway, um, okay, that was a semi rat hole. You can take a half a drink off that one. But there's, um, you know, what I'm saying is, is that, that physical and emotional pain, being laid off is painful. Being uh, let go of a job, whether it was something you did or something the company did. Whether the company came down and shut down the plant and everybody got lost their jobs, or if they shut down your department and just four or five of you lost your job, or if your boss comes to you and says, your services are no longer required. We're going to let you go. Um, yeah, I've been there too, but it's all painful. It is all painful, no matter what anybody says, no matter how anybody tries it. It's okay. I'm good. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's painful. You know, in this society, we don't let 
we don't, I'm not saying we don't let, but we kind of teach our boys, you know, don't cry. And skip all of that. Cry. Ain't nothing wrong with, cry, with a man crying. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know? Um, since my, my, my parents passed in nine years ago now, um, I don't cry at funerals and things like that. I cry at movies. Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't, don't ask me why. I just do. Um, I cry at sad movies. I cry at happy movies. <laughs> but I didn't do that before. You know. Anyway, take the other half of that drink. That was semi rat hole. Um, but you got to let, let go of the pain. You, you, because particularly, okay, here's how, you know, job searching. Sometimes, you, you know, and I've been to um, job networking events where there's somebody. And see, the thing about pain, you know, people say I wear, you know, people, if you wear your emotions on your sleeve, things like that. Particularly with pain, that's not a good thing. You know, uh, I've been to job networking events and you end up sitting at a table with somebody and, you know, you're everybody's introducing themselves and socializing and, you know, seeing what everybody's looking for, and seeing if they can help each other and so on. And you have that one person at the table uh, who hasn't let it go, who hasn't, who's still bitter about being laid off, who's still bitter about, you know, they laid me off, but this other jerk sat next to me. He played tiddlywinks all day and, and they, they kept him. Yeah, but you're here now. And being mad about where you were or what happened to you does not help where you are now. Being mad about the past does not help the present. So, you know, when you sat at the table with that guy who um, won't, can't let go of, of what he's been through, nobody wants to help him. Because, you know, you'll, you'll get the, the high level psychoanalysis at the table. You know, well, dude, you know, that's all good. I mean, we feel you. Yeah, but, you know, you got to gotta let it, let, it, let it go. And they don't. And there's a point where everybody just kind of checks out on them. Okay, dude. Peace. Good luck with that. And nobody helps you. You know, nobody wants to help you. Nobody wants to help a sad Sally or whatever. You know, nobody wants to help that person. You know, once you realize their sadness goes beyond the, the 45 seconds I have allotted today to help people in sadness. Once people realize that, it's like, dude, you're on your own. I, I, I feel for you, but, you know. Let me know how that works out for you. So that's how it hurts you in, in your job search. Um, on jobs even, you know, there have been people who've had jobs, got, you know, been laid off, been through the pain, got a job, and they can't let go of how they were let go from their last job. And, you know, it's, you know again, take it to a dating metaphor. You got a new girlfriend or boyfriend, a partner, and you continually complain about the one that got away, the one that let you go, the one that broke up with you. And there's that point where your current will say, look, I'm about tired of you <laughs> talking about her or him or whatever. Uh, either you're going to be with me or you're going to stay there. But you can't have it both ways. You know. Same thing on a job. There's points where you have to just say, you know what, I've been through it. I don't need to bring it up. I, it, it doesn't mean it hurts less. You know, that's one thing about, about pain. I think that we all feel things hurt less over time. It's not that they hurt less. You just learn better how to deal with the pain. You get used to the pain. Um, I said a few minutes ago, my parents both passed away nine years ago. It still hurts to think about them. Does it hurt less? Nope. So it hurts just as much. You just learn how to deal with it. That's the secret to life, is learning how to deal with it. To learn how to not let that pain fester again, to become a sore that doesn't heal, that continually burns. You know, the reason we 
we have medical treatment is when you get a burn or you get a pain, you get a, a sore, they treat it so that it heals and you move on. That's the, 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 the natural order of things, I think. Get hurt, you deal with it, you move on. And I haven't talked too much about paranoia, but paranoia, you know, my mother used to have this saying, you know, so paranoia, yeah, paranoia don't mean, don't necessarily mean that they're not out to get you. <laughs> um, but paranoia kind of works the same way, you know. I've, I've joked about it, but to some extent, I, I really am. I feel honestly and truly that I am naturally paranoid uh, about everything. You know, we won't go into how my mind works sometimes, but... I'm paranoid about a lot of things. Even when things are going well, it's like, you know, you're worried, okay, when is that other shoe going to drop? You know, um, instead of being able to really enjoy things sometimes when they're going well, uh, I, I can, you know, this is a little insight into the mind of Tyrone. Um, I sometimes worry, uh, well, not sometimes a lot about, okay, when is that other shoe going to drop? When is this going to go bad? You know, um, I don't want the mistakes I've made in the past is when a situation has been going well. Um, I didn't do things to, in, to, to help ensure that it continues to go well. I got, re, I got con, uh, confident, comp, um, conceited, arrogant, you might want to call it. And I just started, you know, sitting back on my throne and enjoying it, basking in the glory of the greatness of the, the happiness of how things were going. And as a result of that, sometimes, and well, many times, things stop going well. But when they stop going well, the sad part is I didn't see it until it was too late. So, yeah, I mean, I do it too, you know, dwelling on that. So now I try when things are going well, I'm just, okay, thank you, God, and keep it going. Don't, 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 don't dwell on it. Pain, the paranoia, I mean, you know, you dwell on these things. Being paranoid, you know, there's ways... That I deal with paranoia. You know, I think there's ways where many people deal with it. You dot your I's and cross your T's. You know, if you are giving presentations, you know, if you have to give a presentation and you're paranoid about how it's going to be, you over prepare for it. You make sure everything on that paper is right. That's how you do it. Um, paranoia at, in job search is, is worse because you don't know what people are thinking. You don't, a lot of times you don't know why you were, you, you were let go. Or you don't know why people aren't helping you. And it can make you paranoid because you don't, you think everybody's out to get me. Um, but somebody said, I read it somewhere, something, they say, you know, don't worry about what you can't affect, what you can't change. I can't change what's in somebody's mind, what's in somebody's heart about helping me. If they choose not to help me, there's really not much I can do about that. So all I can do is, okay, let me keep it moving. You know, let me not worry about that. If somebody, I used to say, you know, I did the show on, you know, I've done shows on discrimination. Um, I talked about ageism and, and sexism and racism and all of that. Um, if they're not going to hire you because of your age, of your, your sex or your race, or your height or your weight, if they're not going to hire you for those things, then make them not hire you. For those things what i mean is you show up every day you show up for your interviews you keep moving forward that's how you deal with your pain that's how you deal with paranoia you just keep moving forward you keep going you don't worry about it you know um yeah you know, i think about the old uh, the original mad max movies even i guess the, re the reboot you just keep going you know you found water okay you got to find the next water you got to find the next shelter Okay. You just keep going. That's how you deal with these things. You know, when, you know, when I was in transition, the one time when I told you I was in there for 15 months, how do you get up and go every day? You just keep going. You don't worry about, you don't think about how long you've been in transition. You don't think about how long you've been um, without a job or how, how many rejections you've got. You can't think about it because if you think about it, that's when that pain and that paranoia will close in on you. So you just keep going. You just keep going. That's all there is to it. I mean, I know it's more easier said than done, but that's what you have to do. 
I have to keep going. I'm actually looking at my notes to see if I just covered everything. Um, yeah, you know, pain and, 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 and paranoia both come from your past, things that have happened in your past. That's how life is. Things happen in your past. And you, things happen and now they're in the past. But the way to deal with them, the simplest way, is to just keep going. To just get up every day and keep going. Turn into a robot if you have to, but just keep going. You know, you didn't get a job today, well, you may get one tomorrow. You know you didn't get one yesterday, so don't, why worry about it? You know, um, tomorrow's another day. Today is another day. You wake up every morning and say, you know, that question you ask yourself, how can I be great today? You know, just ask yourself that question every day. How can I be great? How can I change the world today? Because one day you'll be right. If you wake up with that mindset and every day you focus on being a better person, being a better worker, being a better job seeker, being a better spouse, friend, partner, sibling, be better. Yeah, is that a lot of pressure? Yeah, but let me tell you. You think about life. What is life about? You go through life, you, you're, you're, you're born, you get raised, you get old, you die. You know, they said, uh, I, I, one of the best things I said is, uh, things I've seen, sorry is when they look at your tombstone, they see the start date and the end date, and they don't realize everything about you was in that dash in between. Everything, your, 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 your thoughts, your dreams, your actions, everything is captured in that little dash between those dates. On your resume, everything about you is captured in that start and end date for different jobs. It just tells you how long you've been there, but that dash is everything. Okay? Make that make that be something awesome. Make people look back at you and go, that was a good person. You know, that person didn't give up. The things that people you want people to say about you. You want people to say, you know, you're 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 good. You want people who People will help you in transition if they say, you know what, this is somebody I would love to work with because they have the right attitude. Jobs, getting a job and keeping a job is about aptitude and attitude. It's about how well you are at the tasks of the job and what attitude you bring to the table. Those are the two things you need in a job. Okay. Aptitude is easy. You can learn. When you're talking about attitude, when you're talking about how well of a, of, a, of a, how good of a person you are, those are the things that you can't be taught. Those are the things that you have to learn, that you have to, you have to um, bring to the table. So anyway, we've got about a minute and a half left. Let me see if I can do my uh, closing in that time. As always, I... Thank you for, com for, for, um, for tuning in. If you're listening to the website, please feel free to subscribe in iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave feedback so others can find the show. And as always, I truly appreciate it. If you have a suggestion or a topic you would like me to cover in either the podcast or a one-minute bunny tip, please send it to me at tyrone at bunnystippersareval.com. When you land, please don't forget us. Please support this show by visiting our cafe press store and buying a t-shirt, a water bottle, a coffee mug, a clock, or a sweatshirt so you have a memento of your time in transition. Because I don't want you to forget this time because the moment you do, you set yourself up to be right back in transition again. Uh, as always, people, um, I want to thank you. Um, I think, uh, I keep saying, I think I get more out of the show than, than you guys do. Uh, I, I, I hope you, you, you know, I hope every week that I, I say something that helps somebody. You know, today, my point, just keep going. You know, you want to get through pain and paranoia. Pain and paranoia are, are, cannot help you. Okay, they cannot help you. The only time pain can help you is when it causes you to get adrenaline when you're in a fight. That's the only time pain can help you. Okay, um, you're fighting Ronda Rousey and, you know, I just want to go 35 seconds with her. <laughs> but no, if you're fighting and you're in a fight and you, and you get hit, that's your body's response. You get pain, you get adrenaline, you get stronger, you fight back. So keep going, people. Just keep going no matter what. Don't let anybody make you, make you stop. You just keep going. So with that, thank you very much again. Uh, we'll be back next week with something great. I hope. Take care. You have a good week. And I will talk to you soon.
Bye-bye.